because you have no faith. Today we want to listen and see what the Lord meant by you have no faith. If you have faith as little as a mustard seed, you will move mountains. That's what the Lord said. He expected his disciples to heal that young man, but they couldn't. There are a lot of things that the Lord wants us to do on our own because of the faith and the power that he has given to us we are incapable of doing because we don't have adequate faith. Today our focus will be looking at that mountain moving faith. Amen? Mountain moving faith. Do you want to have a mountain that moves faith? We need to look at the scriptures and find out how we gather them in the first place. Amen? Amen. Now the question for us is, why could the disciples not heal that child? Why could they not heal that child? Even though they tried, why could they not heal that child? Let us look at some of the scriptures we read this morning. Matthew 17, 20. Go back to Matthew 17, 20. The scripture says, So Jesus said to them, Because you, of your own belief, for I surely I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and will move, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. The Lord is talking about some spiritual mountain, amen? Amen. Some obstacle. Something that is standing as a stumbling block. Something that we need to break through. He said to them, if you have the right type of faith, it would have happened for you. That's telling you and I that there is something called we have the potential to make things happen, amen? Amen. When I use the word potential, I want to kind of bring us out of the, you know, spiritual whatever right now. Just think about potential and kinetic. When you have potential, you're talking about something that that is dormant. Potential is there, the power is there, but it's not really doing anything yet. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's sitting there and it's not doing anything yet. Kinetic, on the other hand, is action. Action power. Amen? Mm -hmm. So in this case, people of God may have a lot of power. The question is, is it in the potential realm or is it in the kinetic realm? What part is the power living right now? The Lord expected them to do something when they couldn't. They didn't have the capacity to do that. They did not have the capacity to do that. We're going to look today at how potential can move to kinetic. Amen? Amen. They couldn't help the man whose son had epilepsy. But the Bible also tells us that it is possible to make things happen even when you couldn't make it happen before. Praise the Lord. It is possible to make something happen even when you couldn't make it happen before. We're going to look at another story in the scriptures from Matthew chapter 15. This story is about a lady, a woman, the Bible says the woman is from the, uh, it's a Canaanite, from the Tyre and Sidon area. The Bible says she came to the Lord and she was screaming to the Lord that the Lord should kill her daughter. My daughter was also possessed. Heal my daughter, heal my daughter, heal my daughter. Let us see that scripture as before we continue to explain it. Matthew 15, 22. Matthew 15, 22. Matthew 15, 22, it says, And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. This is a woman that had a need, praise the Lord. I don't know any mother that doesn't want the child well. Amen. 
Unless the murder itself has a problem. The Bible says, you don't want about healing all manner of sickness and diseases. Praise the Lord. But in this particular case, the woman was screaming, have mercy on me. The Bible said, the Lord ignored her. The Lord ignored her. She was screaming, have mercy on me. The other answer, I'm not a word, says the scripture. God literally ignored her in multitudes. Everybody heard her screaming, the Lord ignored her. Question now is, when I see stuff like that in the scripture, I always ask questions, praise the Lord. Why would the Lord ignore this woman? She was desperate. You know, some of us, we sometimes we think, well, if we are very desperate, God will answer us. But here is a woman desperate, screaming, and the Lord ignored her. Her daughter was obviously demon possessed. She was saved by the Lord ignored her. She needed a miracle. The Lord ignored her. The question is why? Why did the Lord ignore her? She got to the point where the disciples said to the Lord, Send her away. She keeps shouting and following us. Please send her away. You want to get why did they tell him to send her away? I think they were embarrassed. Praise the Lord. I think they were embarrassed. Yes, the woman screamed, oh, help me, help me, and the Lord was not doing anything. People might say, oh, why is he not helping her? Oh, why is he? I thought he's a loving person. Why is he not helping her? Whatever reason, I think they were embarrassed. They just wanted her to go away. They wanted her to go away. But the Lord did not do anything. Instead of sending her away, praise the Lord, the Lord decided to interact with her, to have a dialogue with her. The Lord decided to have an interaction with her. That should tell us, sometimes when it appears that God is not responding to us, maybe it's because he wants to get our attention so that we can be willing to interact with him, amen? amen? The way he wants to interact with us. Because sometimes, have you ever been into a conversation, you want to have a conversation with somebody, you want that person to come to your side, not you going to, you know, maybe a balanced position. You just want that person to come to your side. Sometimes that's what we do with God. We just want to, you know, God, hear me. But God is saying to her, I want to talk to you the way that is proper. Amen? Amen. The way that will benefit you, the way that will benefit your relationship and my relationship with you. Let us look at that interaction for a second. Then we're going to look deeply into that interaction. Matthew 15, 24 to 28. Matthew 15, 24 to 28. I want us to read it because we're going to look at it a little more in detail and see what the Lord used this scripture to do for her and for us today. Matthew 15, 24 to 28. He says, But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the Lordship of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, a woman, oh woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The disciples said, send her away. The Lord said, instead of saying, I'm not going to say, I said, I said, I didn't come for that. I came for the lost sheep of Israel. The lost sheep of Israel. When you and I read the lost sheep of Israel, we're thinking, oh, he's talking about Israel, the children of Jacob that have been taken away. That's why he didn't want to talk to the Gentile woman. That's what the scripture is saying. That's the question. 
Israel. What is the last ship of Israel? To answer that question, let us keep going to the scripture. The interaction here, if you notice, kind of changed. The Bible said, when the Lord said, I kept me not for this, but for the worship of Israel, verse 25, look at verse 25. Verse 25 said, then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Something changed, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Something changed. He, she came and worshipped him. Before, she was afar and shouting, praise the Lord. She was afar and shouting. Now she came and worshipped him. That is a big difference in the spiritual realm. That is a big difference. The Lord was ignoring her until she made the right move. Amen. Amen. Until she made the right move. And once she made the right move, everything changed. The focus was completely on her by the Lord. Once she made the right to come and worship him is not just a, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. That's a spiritual change mindset, amen? amen. The spiritual mindset change that the lady had. Her heart changed. Somehow she went from somebody far away, just looking for help, to somebody who wants to have a contact with the Lord. To somebody who wants to have contact with the Lord. What made the Lord grant the woman's request? Another question. What made the Lord grant the woman's request? What made the Lord agree to cast the demon out of the woman's daughter? From not talking to her to now agreeing to do whatever the woman wanted. What made that happen? Again, look at how the whole thing was set up. Initially, she came shouting from a distance. Amen? Amen. A lot of the time, you and I, we shout from a distance. A lot of the time, even in our prayers, we are praying as strangers. Even in our churching, we are churching as strangers. The scripture continues to tell us that the Lord knew why he came. He came to get the lost sheep of Israel. The ones that are interested in being part of Israel. There is a mixed multitude that followed the Israeli Israelites out of Egypt. They were not part of Israel, but they loved the miracles and the signs and wonders, so they were crowd, part of the crowd. That is why the Lord will say, there is not all that are in Israel are of Israel. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't want to go too ahead of myself. Question is, first, he ignored her. Why? Even though she was crying. She was crying again as a stranger, not as a member of the inner circle. Amen? Amen. She was crying as a stranger. This is why he said, the dogs. Don't give it to the dogs. That is referring to the children. All she needed to do was become a child. Amen? Amen. A child of the kingdom. And the Lord will not, sometimes the Lord will not bless us outside of where we should be. You know, sometimes when you pray to the Lord for something and you didn't grant it, maybe you should thank the Lord. Because you might receive something at the wrong time. And it will cost you more harm than good. 
I'm always praying that God knows best. Amen. Amen. If my heart is right, I'll pray. I say, no, my will be your will be done. Because I know in the best of my will, his will is always better than mine. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I know he loves me better than I love myself. So the Lord refused to listen to this woman until she began to move to the right direction. The Lord knew that she was outside. She ignored him. He ignored, he ignored her. Look at Matthew 24. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the Lordship of the house of Israel. She, he was waiting for her. Was waiting for her. Everybody saw her, but he was waiting for this special connection. God is waiting for us. Amen. Amen. He's waiting for us. There's a level of that we need from the Lord that require a level of relationship, a level of intimacy that you can get. You need to get that. When she was shouting, like we shout sometimes, she wasn't looking for a relationship. She was looking for a handout. She was looking for somebody to pay her bill. She was looking for somebody to buy her food. She was looking for somebody to give her new Jordans. So the young people just lifted their head. Did somebody say Jordans? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. May the Lord wanted more. Amen. Amen. Let us say this. The Lord wants more from me. 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 Yes. He wanted more from that lady, that woman. That is why the Bible says, and he came, she came and worshipped him. As soon as she worshipped him, she activated that relationship. She activated that faith. She positioned herself to receive faith. One thing you must understand is even faith is a gift from God. Our faith that we need to receive blessing is also a gift, praise the Lord. So you have to first receive the faith, then you can carry your faith and go and exchange it for the blessings. If you don't have faith, you can believe and scream all you want. Best way I describe faith is faith is like craving. When you look at your account, you say, oh, this person has money. Give him, give him what he wants. We'll, we'll talk about the payment later. If your credit is all messed up, when you come around, they look at you. Once they look at you, oh, it depends on what neighborhood you go to. If you go to like white people neighborhood, they look at the crib. Oh, oh, um, yeah. Normally we are we are able to do this, but um, the person who is in charge today is not around. Perhaps you can come. You know, can we call you or you come back later? I call them. Uh, if you go to some other neighborhood, yeah. what you say you want? Come on, man! You can't afford this. I <laughs> praise the Lord. In other words, what I'm trying to say is this. If your faith is if your faith is bad and you are in the realm of the spirit, asking for something that your faith cannot afford. In the realm of the spirit, that everybody they are looking and seeing everything, they are laughing at you. This is why sometimes you have to when you're praying for something, you can look for someone who has you think has a good faith, amen, and combine your faith with that person. That person will co sign for you. If you go and combine yourself with somebody who is a fake faith, the little that you have, you lose. But what's that you start? That's why you be careful who you pray with. Amen. You care who you go and put your head at the lane and on. You be careful who you, you know, you join with spiritual. Because you don't know if you are doing yourself good or harm. Back to our message. When this lady came to worship the Lord, 
the act of worship does a few things. One, the act of worship signifies that she was willing to submit to his lordship. Amen. She was willing to submit to his lordship. The Lord means the one that tells you what to do and how to do it. Amen. Amen. A lot of people don't want the Lord. They want a savior. But the Bible says he sent us the Lord. If you believe that, confess the Lord Jesus. Romans chapter 10. Confess the Lord Jesus. Then you shall be saved. Praise the Lord. Amen. It did not say if you confess the Savior Jesus, then you shall. No, if you confess the Lord, if you submit to him as the Lord, then you shall be saved. She agreed. She found out that she needed the Lord and she submitted to him. As soon as she showed her worship, the daughter got healed. As soon as she submitted. It shows that she went from being a stranger to one that has, has now begun to develop an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. Things began to happen. Things began to happen. Her daughter was healed as soon as the Lord recognized that this lady has gotten it. She was no longer described as a dog, amen? Now she said, your faith grants you everything. I could sign with you. That's what Jesus said. Let it be unto you. As you have had. When Jesus could sign with you, praise the Lord, it is a down deal. Amen. Amen. He could sign for her. Now, here is the mystery that I want us to take from this story. Here is the mystery. One. We need faith to have our prayers answered. Amen? Amen. We need faith. We just turn, not just problems. You may have problems, but we have to make it work with faith. We need faith to move mountains in our lives. These are spiritual mountains. Any obstacle that is before us. It could be demon possession. It could be a problem in our business. It could be a problem in relationship. It could be a health problem. Whatever it is, everything can be resolved through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Everything can be resolved through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The woman in her faith to receive from Jesus Christ. And once she positions herself properly, she received the faith, and then she received what she was asking. And like in the case of the woman, God's help and blessing is always around us. Sometimes we think we need to go and bring it from afar. The blessings and the love of God is all around us. The problem is how to harness all the blessings that we are looking at. It's like, it's like um, air, cooling air. The air is around you, praise the Lord. But you have to breathe it and feel it. Electricity is in the walls, but you have to connect it somehow. The same thing with the blessings of the Lord. It's all around us. But we have to learn how to connect to that blessing. All we need is how to receive this blessing. And that's where our faith comes in. You know, sometimes our prayers our words betray us, whether we know certain things or we don't know them. The way we pray, what we say. If you know that the blessings of God are around you already, you want to pray that the Lord will open the doors of your understanding. Amen? Amen. Remove the blindfold. Direct your footsteps to where those things are so that the blessing is not here and you're looking at, give me, give me, Lord, give me, give me, Lord. But it's here, praise the Lord, and you will never get it because you're facing the wrong direction. The woman could not receive anything until she built an intimate relationship with the Lord. Key number one, you need to build an intimate relationship. I need to build an intimate relationship with the Lord. That is the key to receiving your blessing. That is the key to perpetual miracle. 
personal one-on-one -on -one relationship. Amen. Amen. If we all develop our relationship collectively, we will be the true church of Jesus Christ. Today, people want to receive from the Lord from a distance. It is, it's not enough to say you want something. You have to show that you know how to receive it. Amen? Amen. And to show it is to cultivate the relationship that is necessary. So the question is, do you want to move mountains, spiritual mountains? I would say it's not by might, it's not by power, it's by the Spirit of the Lord. It's not by physical, you know, exercise. It's a spiritual thing. Amen? Amen. We must seek this intimate, personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Personal relationship with Jesus. Sometimes we are waiting for the people around us to, to line up before we can move forward. Sometimes you may have to go it alone. Amen? Amen. As you go alone, perhaps your evidence around you will pull the other people with you. But you have to go in terms of relationship with the Lord, the intimacy. It's a one-on-one -on -one thing, a personal thing. When the woman came about to the Lord, she began that relationship on a personal level. Like the woman, we all need to come and bow before the Lord spiritually. Amen? Amen. We need to learn how to bow before the Lord spiritually. And we will see what the Lord will do. Our last scripture for the day, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their lives. What this scripture is saying is that I want intimate relationship with you, says the Lord. I want you to seek my face and not just my hand. You see, those who want intimate relationship want to look at people's face. But those who just want this and just want their hand, but well, hand is where you receive something. Praise the Lord. The Lord said, if his people, that is us, if we will humble ourselves and submit to the Lord, repent of our sins, and I'll turn, turn away from the way we used to think, and seek his face, seek a relationship, intimate relationship. You know why the Lord, the Bible talks about, God is always talking about his people committing adultery and fornication. It's because the relationship between God and us, between the church and the Lord, is an intimate relationship. Amen? Mm -hmm. Going away from that, I'm going to do other things. It's like a married person going, living the marital relationship and going after other people. That is the way it describes it, like an adult. So our question today in closing is, how is our relationship with the Lord? It's something you and I must ask ourselves. You need to know that the mountain moving faith of the Lord is here and is now. Amen? Amen. It is here and it is now. You don't have to go to Jerusalem to pick it up. It is here and it is now. The healing power of the Lord is here and it is now. Everything that we need from the Lord is here and it's now. It's in this place now. All we need to do is learn to humble ourselves spiritually by faith. Amen? Amen. Learn to humble. I'm not the word humble, humble, humble. Some people still talk about humble humility so much, you begin to wonder, can you humble yourself and stop talking about humility, please? I mean, the word humility just comes out of there. No, this humble, humble. 
almost always so it's like you're frightened. I'm humbled. You know the humble person? I am humble. This is Mr. Humble. Humble, humble. Right, please, but humble. Can we really see some humility here? If you're humble, you don't have to tell people. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, let us humble ourselves and receive the faith that we need. Let us worship the Lord from our hearts. Let us receive the mountain moving faith from the Lord today. Amen. Amen. Let us receive the mountain moving faith from the Lord today. And you know, this year, the Lord spoke to our hearts like this is the year of restoration and promotion. Amen. Amen. Restoration and promotion. I don't want you to be left behind. This is why this uh, this testimony service next Sunday. I want you to come, come if you have been restored or promoted in any or blessed in any way, come and testify. If you feel like you haven't, come and hear people who have been. That will encourage your faith. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I don't know about you. I have a testimony myself, and I'm waiting. For next Sunday. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Just as I am with a worldly, but I thy blood wash it. I've been singing that song. I want us to stand. Just stand up. And stand up before the Lord. To
to receive her deliverance, to receive her prayers. Today, as the Holy Spirit will teach us how to draw nearer to the Lord, that we were at the moment we came in here today. Ask him, say, Holy Spirit.
that you want the Lord to do for you. I think you know, have faith, have faith in the Lord. Tell the Lord to do it, not because you are crying, but because you have relationship with Him. Tell him, Lord, do it because I belong to you. Do it because I belong to you, my Lord and my Savior. And I say to you, as the Lord said, let it be unto you as you have requested. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let it be unto you as you have requested. Jesus mighty name. Let it be unto you as you have requested. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.